Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Reeve, one of the facilitators for the Link Data for Beginners track of the LD4 2020 conference. Um, this session is a live Q&A with presenters Rob, Catherine, and Lisa. But before we start, I uh, just wanted to let everyone know how we'll field questions in this session. So the webinar has a Q&A feature. Uh, there should be a Q&A button that you can click and use that to enter your questions. And then myself and Lisa, the other facilitator, will answer, will take those questions and ask them out loud to the presenters. So Rob, Catherine, and uh, Lisa, while we wait for people to enter in some questions, do you mind briefly introducing yourselves? Definitely. Thanks, Greg, and thanks, um, Lisa and Michelle, for your help setting all this up. Um, I'm Catherine Gronspell. I'm the Digital Collections Manager uh, at Carnegie Hall in the Archives, and you are in the chart maps and visualization session um, where we will talk about making linked open data fun and approachable with the work that we've done for the Carnegie Hall Data Lab. Um, and I'd like my colleague Lisa Barrier to introduce herself next. Hi, I'm Lisa Barrier. I'm the Digital Collections Associate with the Carnegie Hall Archives. Um, thank you again for everyone who's listening and moderating for us. Uh, Rob, yourself. I'm Rob Hudson. I'll add my thanks to the to the group. Um, my title is officially manager of the Carnegie Hall Archives, which uh, doesn't mean a lot outside of Carnegie Hall. But to give you some context, I've been with the Carnegie Hall Archives now for almost coming up on 23 years. So I do a little bit of everything. Um, but uh, if you've watched the talk, one thing you'll see is I do a lot with our performance history. And I do a lot of work with our uh, with that data and what we've done trying to uh, present it as linked open data. So um, yeah, we're excited to uh, see what uh, questions people have and, and to talk a little bit about our work. Yeah, so just, just to clarify to the attendees, uh, Rob and Catherine and Lisa pre-recorded their session that's available on the YouTube channel. Um, so we're not going to show that presentation here, but here that is an opportunity for you to engage with them, uh, asking questions about their work with this uh, data lab that they've been working on. So feel free to ask your questions now. I also, thank you, Greg. And I also just uh, dropped a direct link to our pre-recorded session on YouTube if folks want to take a look before or after. Great. And if people need some uh, spurring for questions, we'd be happy to also uh, just get up our data lab site um, while we're here and show you a few things. So um, if that's if that's helpful as well. Yeah, I think I think Rob, I'm going to stop sharing and let you uh, do that. At least put it up at the very least, and then we can hopefully I'll spur some questions. Sure. All right. Well, I will go ahead and um, and share my screen here and show you uh, the data lab site. So um, uh, just as we're, as we're waiting, if you had, did have a chance to watch the video, um, this is a site that we put up uh, in January. Um, our data lab was something that we started uh, to try and, and showcase some of the work we're doing with linked open data, which revolves around Carnegie Hall's performance history data. Um, which tries to cover the details of all the events at Carnegie Hall back to 1891. And uh, we began releasing this data in RDF format um, in 2017. Uh, we're really excited that this week we have just implemented a, an automatic procedure that will update that data on a daily basis. I'm sorry, on a weekly basis. Um, so it, it uh, should, should be up to date. Of course, we don't have events going on at Carnegie Hall right now. Um, partly because there's not a lot going on in the summer, but also because of uh, the pandemic. Um, we hope that that be can change <laughs> before too long, although our events are canceled through January. But um, so our, um, our data lab site, we do have, uh, we have some blog posts where we talk a little bit about some of the um, things we've been um, working on, maybe some of our experiments. Um, Experiments is a, is a page that we've got here where um, we try to have a little bit of fun with our data. So what we showcased in the, uh, the, the video, um, one in particular is um, 
we keep track of uh, as much as we can where people were born. And so what we do here is we take advantage of, you can see down here in the corner, that this is being driven by the Wikidata query service. And so we've taken advantage of some of their default display templates to do this. And we can do it because um, we were able to get Wikidata to create a property for Carnegie Hall agent ID. And so um, you can go through here and, and um, click on some of the different markers. And if there's an image in the uh, Wikimedia Commons, it'll come up. Um, it'll tell you where the person was born. You can click on their, their Wikidata item. Um, if you do that, you'll come here and you can see where um, there's our Carnegie Hall agent ID. This uh, links back to our um, linked open data release, which right now these pages are very, very basic, but it tries to get the data out there. So um, that's the, uh, the birthday experiment, which is, which is kind of fun. Um, some of the others that we've done that work with um, uh, Wikidata, for example, is this one where we can show Grammy Award winners. So this obviously is not data that we keep track of in our own data set, but because we are um, uh, linking up to Wikidata, we can pull this data in and um, get information on, on things like Grammy Awards or uh, other, other awards of those that sort. So that's another one that uses the, uh, the default display templates, in this case, the image grid, as opposed to the map. Bob, we've got a few questions. Let's, uh, Excellent. we'll, we'll start uh, uh, asking these for you. So the first one, what is the most surprising thing that you discovered using the data? That's a good question. I don't know if, uh, if Catherine and Lisa might be even more surprised than me because I've been working with this for, for so many years. Um, I, um, what would the most surprising thing be? I think just for me, it's just um, digging into the, the connections for some of the, um, the, the names that we have in our data. So particularly because Carnegie Hall um, has, uh, especially in the pre-radio and pre-television era, we had a lot of non-musical events. So a lot of things like lectures and travelogues and political conventions and things. And so um, having the opportunity to, to investigate those people and their work and the way that they're all connected um, has been really interesting for me. And I love trying to you know, play that six degrees of separation game and just sort of see um, where things take us. So, you know, for instance, um, one interesting experiment that we put up was uh, our opening night was May 5th, 1891. And so because of um, our linked data and, and uh, this piggybacks on the uh, Chronicling America site from Library of Congress, we were able to link up with um, front pages of uh, newspapers from around the country on May 5th, 1891. And so I, I think it's uh, this maybe not necessarily something surprising, but it's just um, that kind of value added that you can get from from uh, linked data, which I really like. I don't know if uh, Catherine or Lisa, if you have anything to add. Yeah, um, I yeah I really liked our last experiment, the Lashvitsky effect, for that same reason. How it shows all the different links between these famous performers. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I thought it was cool that all of these relationships were stated in Wikidata, and I think it'll be cool to add more relationships as we go along and sort through some of our data. I'll also just add quickly before we leave this question that we do for all of our experiments, if you haven't had a chance to watch the video yet, we include what we call a lab report, where we just talk about um, why we created the experiment, the methods that we use to go uh, to, to do it. Um, we show you the Sparkle query and we talk about what we learned and maybe what we'd like to learn or what we didn't learn. So um, that can, can help you uh, dig into it a little bit further with that too. I don't know if that helps answer that question. Next question. In the presentation, you mentioned that some of your experiments use default wiki data visualizations. The questioner, Laura, is wondering how you access those. Is it through Wikidata itself? Yeah, so um, I don't know if, if Catherine or Lisa 
uh, want to jump in, um, but I can I can um, also also show that um, if you when you're actually looking at one of these when you see when I mouse over here, this is actually just um, we're using an embed code. So this is um, if you mouse over to the side, you'll see that uh, Wikidata allows you to, to click on this thing that says edit sparkle and you'll see the sparkle um, query on the on the Wikidata query service. And you can see up here at the top where these um, uh, default views are. And Wikidata has got, if you're not familiar with this, they've got all these wonderful kind of autocomplete features. So if you just start typing like the pound sign, you'll see all the different kinds of um, display features that they've got that you can plop in sort of automatically, which is kind of nice. And then, um, I'm not sure if I can see, I got to move my, um, let's see here. I think I have to, it's not going to let me, let's see. For some reason it's not letting me run the query. I'm just going to do this really quickly here. I'll show you if I put this in a different, um, whoops, different window here and drop the query in there when I run it. Um, if you look over here on the side, you'll see where you can, um, you can download um, the, the results or you can, the, what we've done is we've taken this link to the embed result. And then um, in here, there's an embed code that you can copy. And so what we've done for that is on our, um, on our data lab, uh, which is run through, um, GitHub, I'll show you, we have a link down here in the bottom. And this is a public GitHub repository. So this is, we've taken advantage of GitHub pages, which are as a very simple way to publish a website. And maybe, I don't know if Catherine, you wanna talk a little bit more about, about this um, since you've worked quite a bit with the markdown. Yeah, thanks Rob. Um, so as Rob mentioned, both the project site itself and the GitHub repository that it's built on top of are both public. So if you're like me and, and like kind of poking around other people's projects to understand how things are structured, we also wanted to share that ability for the data lab site. Um, we, as you can see on Rob's screen, um, you paste in the embed code that you can generate from the Wikidata query service once you've written your query. Um, and this may look like it's really uh, streamlined and simple, but it actually took Lisa, Rob, and I um, a little bit of time to understand how embed codes and um, marked up text display uh, when you're also adding another layer of the GitHub pages on top of the GitHub repository. So GitHub pages is something that is built in um, to the GitHub service. Um, and you can make almost any repository a GitHub page uh, for it, which will turn it into essentially a very lightweight website that you can administer yourself. And that was something that was really important to us as owners within the organization of um, this information and of this initiative, we wanted to be able to have a little bit of flexibility and a little bit of control over what we were able to share without having to engage our web team or our IT department and trying to build something for us. So um, as Rob just demonstrated, once you have the embed code in the document in the repository, when it goes through uh, the visualization process through what GitHub pages allows. Um, we finally did get it to work and there's definitely been some learning curves on our side on the linked open data part, but also on how to effectively communicate the work that we've been doing. Um, so that being said, if you have any suggestions or feedback about the way that the project site is structured or if there are other things that you're curious about that aren't covered in the lab reports, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we'll, we can put maybe, I think our addresses are at the end of the video, but we'll also put our contact information um, in, in the chat or share in some way too. Um, Great. Thank you. Next question from Jen. Have you found yourselves editing either Wikidata or Wikipedia to provide fuller information about the performers? Yes, definitely. Um, I know, at least from my standpoint and Catherine's, we both took a Wiki EDU course before we launched Data Lab just to get a little bit more comfortable with Wikidata. And one of our tasks was to edit records or um, I guess items. So um, we spent a lot of time with that. And I think it's definitely helped clean up our 
data and we have a lot of um, performers or like related entities that may not have a Wikidata item. So we, that might be a future project to go through and just start adding as many people as we can or as many groups as we can just to make everything available. Agreed. Yeah. I, uh, go ahead, Kat. I'll, I'll say really quickly too, just about that Wikidata course. Um, I put a link to the Wiki.edu uh, site that's offering them. They are uh, a little pricey, especially if you don't have organizational support. However, there, there has been historically financial assistance available. So I would encourage you to connect with Wiki.edu. It was something that was really eye-opening for me as someone who before that point, I think had anonymously corrected a a cause of death on one wiki data item during a hackathon a few years ago. So um, I was definitely a little intimidated to start, but the the course and the way that it was structured as a very collaborative um, sort of approach, and of course doing it with Lisa by my side was really important for us, I think, to understand the impact and how powerful creating and connecting um, items in wiki data is, especially as we um, are working towards making sure that our performance data and all the value within it is being correctly associated with these external authorities. Um, and I'm sure Rob can go real deep on his experience with aligning um, external authorities with our internal data set. So I'll kick it back over to you, Rob. Um, I'll just add uh, quickly to that, that um, uh, just to reiterate when when we uh, first put our data out in 2017, that this was the, a big part of the reasoning behind um, our proposal to create the Carnegie Hall agent ID, um, is that we knew that uh, there would be quite a bit in our data that maybe was underrepresented or completely unrepresented in the structured data sphere. And so we were kind of hoping that by contributing our data, we could facilitate the creation of Wikidata items or uh, you know, updating, fleshing out the records more. And so that was a big objective with, uh, with the creation of that um, property. And so I, I would say that I, I have done a lot more of editing of existing items and creating new items, although I have created a few new ones that um, uh, entities that were present in our data that were not in Wikidata. So um, I, I generally, I'm, you know, editing our data every single day. And so it's pretty easy for me to um, update things that we're going to be putting out in RDF and then to, to align that with Wikidata. Um, but the area of creating more is uh, newer items is something we'd like to do more of. I would also, um, I'm interested in working more with um, creative works like musical works. Uh, we're beginning to align our, our musical work IDs with Wikidata as well. So we do have that um, uh, property, um, which, uh, let's see, I, I'm not going to bother showing showing it to you right now, but, um, whoops, clicking on the wrong things. So, um, yeah, we, we a lot of editing and aligning, and then as, as I'm in there doing that, I will maybe add uh, other authority IDs like Library of Congress or things like that that I find if it's missing on items. Um, I do a lot of adding um, uh, references because I think that's important. You know, it, it to me it, it strengthens the utility and the, the trustworthiness of Wikidata items. If you can see that people are actually, if you look at an item and you see that there are no references for a statement, um, you maybe trust it a little bit less. So I try and add that whenever I can as well. So, yeah. I'd also like to say really quickly too on this topic, and I see there are some other questions that might reference this too, is that um, overall, you know, Rob's initial dive in, into creating linked open data for our performance history and how Lisa and I have been brought into the process has definitely had impact on other areas, um, specifically our digital collections management. Um, we have an asset management system that we use and I feel that it has definitely strengthened our ability to make sure that there is alignment between um, not only the source database that creates eventually the linked open data, um, but also just generally making sure that if we do have vocabularies or controlled lists in our 
um, metadata outside of this particular stream of work that we're still doing that alignment, even if we're not quite ready to have it activated. So an example of this is when we have material that has new geographical places or has languages that we don't have a language key keyword for yet, Lisa, um, mostly Lisa actually, will go in and make sure that we have the ISO code for the language or the GeoNames URI um, and just make sure that when we're ready, those things can be activated really quickly. So I feel like this has had a really positive impact generally on our work to make sure that you know, as we move forward to hopefully a more unified approach, um, including more semantically described objects, that even our non-semantic uh, data is kind of ready to be optimized in that way when we get to that point. The next question is from Elizabeth. Can you talk a little bit about the connections between your LD data set and Wikidata? Are you repeating information in both places or letting Wikidata handle some of it, i.e. agent information? Um, I guess I would say that, that We're probably repeating some information, but that's more um, a factor of, of what we keep track of in our internal database, So, which is pretty basic when it comes to um, agents. So, you know, agent could be a performer or a composer or um, like a musical group or uh, because Carnegie Hall um, is also a rental hall, we have information on uh, presenting organizations. So like a um, you know, like a, an empresario or something like that. So what we keep track of is just the basic biographical information, like dates of birth or death, if applicable, where somebody was born. Um, and then uh, when we first began um, looking towards releasing this as linked open data, what I did is I found some ways within our database to store external identifiers. So. Um, I'll just mention quickly that the, the database that we use is um, something that was designed for symphony orchestras to do their concert planning. So it has an acronym, it's called OPAS, which stands for Orchestra Planning and Administrated Six Administration System, I believe. It was originally designed for um, uh, music orchestra, um, symphony orchestra music librarians. So that's what we're using to keep track of our performance data, but I've kind of co-opted some uh, empty fields in there where I can store like a Wikidata ID or something like that. So um, basically that's the primary point of connection for us is that, that, that Wikidata has been where we've leveraged things more than any other way. So we're not, we're not really consuming data back into our system from that. But um, what we're trying to do is use it as kind of that value added. So even though our, our public presentation is still in a more rudimentary phase, right, with our data lab and things like that, we are looking to a point where we can begin to um, enhance our presentation uh, a little bit more. Like we'd, we'd, we'd like to begin bringing our um, digital collections into this data model. And Catherine can talk a little bit more about that. So. Um, that's sort of in its infancy yet, but um, so it's, it's, I would say we're not, we don't consume back information other than I may refer, I may use Wikidata or um, like Library of Congress, things like that as, as a sort of an extra authority source as I'm creating our own records um, in our internal database. So I'm not sure if that answers uh, the, the, the question or that's kind of uh, the, the main point of intersection, I guess. Great, next question. Have you inspired other organizations to follow your example? I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I can say just selfishly, uh, watching your presentation, I'm inspired. I, I wanna try to get something like this going in our organization. So you, you've got one at least. <laughs> well, I mean, that was kind of our hope was, um, you know, the original impetus for doing this was I, I became interested in linked open data and, um, you know, I, I have been at Carnegie Hall for quite a while. My background was as a musician 
And um, I went to library school later on and I got interested in this around 2011 or so. And I immediately thought, wow, our performance history data would lend itself really well to this. This would be very cool. And so um, I, it was also uh, a realization that there was not necessarily a lot of that out there in the linked data space yet. So we figured it would be a good contribution. So. Um, you know, uh, Catherine had pointed out before that, you know, none of us are um, necessarily like technologists or developers. And so there has been a learning curve and, and um, we're trying to inspire people to not be afraid of wading into this. Um, when I started, everybody just told me, well, I said, well, what do I have to do? And they said, well, learn Python and Sparkle. And I was like, okay, great. No problem. Um, <laughs> But I, I did start to learn some Python and I learned how I could use it to manipulate our data and the Sparkle stuff came later, but I learned enough to be able to, to reformat the data and how we could accomplish that. And so we're, we're always trying to um, improve the kind of the tech back end of how we're doing this. Um, I've had a lot of help in that, in that end, but um, it is doable. So, and, and we're doing it with not like a ton of resources. So um, that's where we hope we can inspire. Um, I also think um, we've, I think we all three of us have kind of referenced this in some way, either between the pre-reported part or just in our conversation so far. Um, while in the performing arts world, not a ton of um, linked open data initiatives have are, are available to us yet. There is a lot of work that has already been done um, in this realm. And because we are part of a library archive museum community, um, we've definitely been the recipients of some very, very generous uh, open and free advice and experience. And like I mentioned before, um, that organizations or individuals you know, freely share their documentation, um, freely share their expertise, and that has been incredibly, incredibly helpful. Um, are you pulling up Link Jazz, Rob? Yeah, you have a nice link. I think you're still muted, Rob, if you're trying to say something. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, I can bring up Link Jazz. Sorry. There we go. So as um as Link Jazz is on the screen, I also uh, want to acknowledge there was one last question, and I know we're very close to um, sort of the end of our half an hour. Um, oh, uh, Lisa F, do you? Would you like me to read it or, sorry? Okay, I, I have it. Um, have you been able to gain new insights by linking your data to data sets from other performing arts organizations or are there questions you hope to answer if you could search browse your data along with other organizations data? Wonderful question and thank you, Lisa. Um, I, I'll, I'll say really quickly, there definitely has been um, groups that we've participated in recently, um, an effort to get, uh, I guess, really an international model for performing arts um, data, uh, mostly with European contributors, but definitely global um, contributions there. There's also a small New York City centric performing arts folks who are interested in linked open data. So we've definitely found um, opportunities for collaboration and people who are at different stages in their journeys with linked data or linked open data, just as we are. Um, I am very excited by the, the concept and the opportunity to potentially trace artists and performers across different tours, so being able to connect our data set with others to say, okay, this, per this person maybe performed at these other places and then the following month they performed at these places and six months later they performed at Carnegie Hall. And then after their Carnegie Hall debut, maybe they performed down the street somewhere. So I think that one of the 
really wonderful things um, that comes out as an opportunity of the data lab and the work that we've been able to do is that it's just about unlocking these stories, um, especially with, as Rob mentioned before, there are a lot of individuals and groups in our data set not well represented at all or represented at all, um, which is also work that Link Jazz has been doing for a long time and a lot of other places too. So. Um, Rob, do you have anything else to share or Lisa on that? Nope. Um, I, I see we're, we're pretty much out of time, but um, that pretty much says it. I just put our, the, the contact page of our data lab site up here where you can see the, the easiest way to get in touch with us is uh, just right here at uh, our archives at carnegiehall.org. That's the most straightforward. Um, but. Um, we also had it in our at the end of our video. So we are always happy to answer questions. We're always looking for inspiration from others. Um, we're looking to improve things. So let us know your thoughts. And um, thanks everybody for the opportunity to, uh, to share this with you. Yeah, thanks, Rob, Catherine, and, and uh, Lisa. Uh, I, I give you a round of applause, but you know, virtual round of applause. So well done. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.